Hi, and welcome to episode 49 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live on a farm with my husband and our five children. Today is Saturday, December 22nd, 2018. This is a podcast all about my life as a knitter, a crocheter, a hand dyer of yarn, and a sewist. Thank you so much for joining me. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts. You can find me on Ravelry at Noble Character. And I also have a group for this podcast on Ravelry under Noble Character Crafts Podcast. In that group, you will be able to find the show notes for this episode as well as previous episodes and several other chatter threads. You can also get in touch with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I also have links to all of the places that you can find me in the description box below. I am currently hosting a knit along along with the ladies of the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast, and it is called the Be My Neighbor Cal. It is running just for a few more days until the end of the year, and it is for any project that you would like to make, either knitted or crocheted, that is a cardigan. All cardigans are included in the cowl, and that is in honor of Mr. Rogers, who often wore knitted cardigans that his mother made for him. And also included in the cowl are any gift or charity projects that you would like to make. So I'm sure many of you have uh, gift projects that you are working on still leading up to the holidays. And so if you would like to enter your projects into the finished objects thread, I will be pulling one more prize for the knit along at the beginning of January. There is a chatter thread as well as a finished objects thread in the Ravelry group, so I would love to have you join in. I actually need to pull, a, or I already did, choose another winner for the December prize for the Be My Neighbor Cal. And I wanted to announce that I uh, chose ra used random number generator again and chose number 151. And the winner is another yarn nine. So congratulations. Please get in contact with me if uh, once you see this and let me know your mailing address. And I will be glad to get this prize off in the mail to you. So I showed this uh, at the beginning of the month when I first announced the prize. But I will show it again just so you can see this is how all of my yarn comes from my Etsy shop. So it comes in a hand stamped project bag like this. And the prize is a set of five mini hanks of yarn. And the colors in here, the colorways are Friend. This one is Flourish. This is Springs of Life. This one is Glad. And this one is Fountains of the Deep. So they are all on my Pitter Patter base, which is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. They are each 20 grams and they are 92 yards each. And all of my yarn also comes with a progress keeper slash stitch marker. And on here I have a cute little green jingle bell. So I will be so happy to get this off in the mail to you as soon as you contact me. And again, congratulations. And of course, continue to enter your finished objects. And like I said, I will be drawing one more prize at the beginning of January for the knit along. All right. So I have a few finished objects to share with you that I'm super excited about. You uh, can see here, I am wearing the Layer Me cowl that I was able to finish. This is a beautiful pattern by Gabrielle W. And I have made this for my sister-in-law for a Christmas present. And I'm really pleased with how it has turned out. I use my own hand dyed yarn for this project. The main color is my night colorway, which is the solid black color. And then the pattern calls for a set of five mini skeins that are in a gradient. And so I used my Listen's faded set in a mini skein set, which is available in my Etsy shop. And so that starts with this light gray color that is speckled with black and rusty orange. And then it fades into a little bit 
darker gray all the way up to the darkest shade, which is right here. And this is on my Pitter Patter base as well, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. The black is actually on my Solace base because I had some of that left over from my Boho Blush Shawl. So that is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. I started with this lightest color, striping it in with the black, and then there's a lace section with the lightest color, and then again you do stripes with the second color, and a lace section with the second color, and so on. And you work all the way until the darkest color, and then you use a Kitchener stitch to graft the two ends together. I started with a provisional crocheted provisional cast on, and so anyway, that's I unpicked that and then um, grafted the two ends together. It is. It has an I-cord edging on both sides, which is wonderful. It hides the unused yarn as it is worked up the sides or carried up the sides. I use the recommended needle size, which was a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle. That's right. And um, it used all but, I believe, four grams of each mini skein. And um, it used about 50 grams of the black color. Not quite. So anyway, I'm very, very happy with this and I will be wrapping it up and gifting it to my sister-in-law for Christmas. It is long enough to wrap around twice for a cozier fit, you know, underneath a coat or something to keep warm. And I really love this. This would be a great project to use with mini skeins. You could even, use, I was thinking I could even use it with my 10 gram mini skeins that I'm getting in my advent calendars and just half everything, you know, instead of doing um, I think the stripe section has 12 um, stripes of each color and then instead you could just do six and then the lace section you could just only you know do half as many repeats so that you know you would have enough yarn and that would work well so I may make another one of these for myself because it is really I really like how it looks and I think it would be really nice to have um, to wear underneath coat or of course just to wear with any outfit. If it was really colorful, it'd be fun to wear with so many different things. So anyway, I highly recommend this pattern. That's not working. <laughs> Let me rearrange myself here. Anyway, I'm really happy with it and I'm really hopeful that my sister-in-law will like it and get a lot of use out of it. So I think I've mentioned before that I've never knitted my sister-in-law anything before. So I'm to have made her something finally she's been my sister-in-law for over 10 years now and I've never made her anything that's horrible isn't it <laughs> all right there I'm kind of situated better anyway I'm very pleased with this and oh I think it's just so pretty I really love how it looks so all right I have also been able to finish my daughter's cardigan that I was making for her for her Christmas dress so yay, I'm so excited. I was able to get all of my Christmas knitting done that I wanted to. And this has turned out so beautiful. I really am happy with it. And so is my daughter. It's not a surprise for her. I had to try it on her several times and she knew I was making it to go along with her pretty red Christmas dress here. My mom got this Christmas dress for her and it has short sleeves. And so I wanted to make her a sweater to wear with it to keep her warm. So this is called the Posy 8-ply, which is a beautiful pattern by Georgie Nicholson. And I did make some modifications. Um, it is made from the top down. I, she, um, I made this size a size that's a little bit too big for my daughter because I want her to be able to wear it for a couple of years. So she should have had, I should have made this size 25 inch. It's based on the chest circumference. Um, for my daughter that would have been the size that would have fit her right now but I went up to a 27 so that's two sizes up from where my daughter's size is right now so it's a little bit wide for her but that's okay she'll be able to grow with it and um, it's not it's not um, too big I mean it's not it looks nice on her still it's just got more of a boxy fit for her because she is pretty thin um, but I um, wanted to, you know, like I said, I wanted to be able to have this in her wardrobe for a couple of years. 
Uh, the modification that I made was that I shortened it quite a bit. Um, the original pattern in the picture shown has, I believe, eight repeat or eight of these diamond patterns, and I've only done four rows of these diamond patterns because I wanted it to fit more on her natural waist. It just looks cute with this dress, I thought. And I am just so pleased with how this has turned out. It's such a beautiful pattern. So um, like I said, you start from the top down, you, you uh, start with a US size five, or I did to get the gauge. The gauge for this is 22 stitches to four inches. And I started with a US five, which is a 3.75 millimeter, just for the first, I think, four rows of um, the neck band. And then I switched to a US six, four millimeter for the remainder of the project. Oh, I did switch down to a US 5 again for the cuffs on the arms. Um, but I'm just really pleased with it. It also has lace on the back. And I think it has turned out so beautifully. Oh, the other modification that I made was to the sleeves. So there are a few decreases up here at the top. And um, then the pattern says to just knit this straight. I wanted it to come in a little bit so you can kind of see that I made a few more decreases after the elbow just to taper in the forearm of the cardigan so that it wouldn't be quite so large um, around the wrist. So I just wanted to taper that in a little bit. And I love the little eyelet kind of detail here around the cuffs and on the bottom. My daughter really loves it too. She's really quite uh, pleased with the arm cuffs. She keeps showing, when she's tried it on, she's shown um, my husband and her brothers, um, look at the cuffs, look how pretty they are. And she calls this her snowflake cardigan because of the lacy pattern, it's so pretty. Oh, and I had these beautiful little pearl buttons in my stash and those have, I think they go so well with it. They match so well and are really, beautiful, elegant little addition. So, oh, the button band is also knitted as you go. So you don't have to pick up and add that button band, which is so nice. And there's just the two buttons. It doesn't, it's open here at the bottom, obviously. So anyway, I'm super pleased with this. Oh, I'm, I use, again, my own yarn for this. This is Noble Character Crafts yarn as well on my undyed lambs colorway. And this is on my Josephine base, which is a DK weight um, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So anyway, I'm very pleased with this and I'm so excited that I was able to finish it so that she can wear it along with this pretty red Christmas dress. And like I said last time, I, she'll be able to get so much use out of this with so many of her dresses that don't have long sleeves on them. So, Okay, I have just a few works in progress that I want to share with you. The first one is in this cute bag that I got from My Creative Frenzy on Etsy. And in here, I am doing a repair job on a pair of socks. This is actually the second pair of socks I ever knitted. So they're a little over a year and a half old, I think. And I have worn them a lot. And, um, they also are um, probably knit at, well, they're a little bit too, I, I made these using 72 stitches um, and I that is too big for me really. I generally now use 64 stitches for my socks. And um, I think that the gauge on these is a little bit looser than what I knit now, I think. I guess I'm not 100% positive on that, but anyway, I knit these, um, cabled socks and I forget the pattern. I'll put that down below though. Um, it is a free pattern I know on Ravelry and it's very pretty. I love um, the pattern of this. This was my first cabled project as well and the, only the second pair of socks I ever made. And um, I used my own hand dyed yarn for these. This is on my pitter patter base as well. And this is on my choice silver colorway. But I had, I am pretty hard on my socks and my slippers. If you've watched before, you know that I wear holes in my footwear very easily. <laughs> I have a pretty high arch and for some reason I wear out the ball, 
where the ball of my foot is, I wear that part of my footwear out very quickly. So these actually hadn't gotten a hole in them yet, but the the yarn was getting very, very thin and I could tell that a hole was gonna start to develop any day. So I wanted to fix them before I got a hole and it made, a, made them even worse. So what I ended up doing was just ripping back um, to you know a little ways past the place where the thread, the yarn was a little bit too thin and just picked up and I'm just knitting straight stockinette for, they're gonna be a little bit longer toe. So I ripped back 31 rows and um, I'm just knitting um, stockinette stitch and I'm already starting to decrease for the toes I, um, right now. Actually, I'm well, I'm starting to decrease so that I can, because like I said, I started with 72 stitches for these and I wanna get down to 64, but I think by the time I'm down to 64, it'll be ready for me to actually decrease for the toe. Um, but anyway, I am using some Patton's Croy socks yarn that I had in my stash and I know that this is um, you know, pretty hard wearing yarn. And so I thought I would try to use this up. It is in the gray brown marl colorway. And I had made a pair of socks for my littlest boy using this yarn. So I had this left over, quite a bit of it left over. Um, this is 75% washable wool and 25% nylon. And so I am obviously not matching the colors. I just started knitting, pulling from both of these skeins randomly. So they're not gonna match, but that's okay. Nobody's gonna see, well, not very many people are gonna see the toe of these socks, you know, and I wasn't too concerned about them matching com perfectly. So anyway, I'm obviously knitting these two at a time. I'm using US size one, 2.25 needles, um, which usually gives me a gauge of nine stitches to one inch for socks. This shouldn't be uh, too long before I have the, them completed, but I just wanted to share those with you. And then I also have another pair of socks that I need to do the same thing for, and these actually have a hole in them. But um, this was kind of an experiment. I made these scrappy socks. Uh, I, I cast them on on January 1st of this year, and I think I finished them in February, I think. Um, and I had done a bit of an experiment. I knew it was kind of a trial experiment using my radiant base for the foot of these, which is 70% superwash merino, 30% silk. So it has no nylon in it. And I was just trying it out because I had heard that silk can be pretty strong. And I just wanted to see how that would wear. And it has not wear, worn well. <laughs> it is a single ply. And so it wasn't a great choice now I know that but anyway you can see here it has made a hole in it and there's actually another spot right here that is very thin so I'm gonna rip back to this blue stripe and do the same thing with these knit them again and in, in probably another Patton's Croy something that's really hard wearing this one hasn't yet made holes but you can see there's two spots here that are really thin so I do not recommend my radiant base for socks <laughs> um, because um, I have worn these a fair amount. I really love wearing these because they're so fun and colorful and go with so much. Um, but I haven't worn them nearly as much as that other pair. And, um, you know, I did just only finish them this year. So I haven't gotten nearly enough wear out of them to warrant holes already, in my opinion. So anyway, I will be working on those next. Um, I really don't have any other works in progress to share except that I just thought I would quickly share the project that I have had on hold for a while and I'm going to be picking it back up and it is in my Tanny Casey project bag that I love. It's a corduroy paisley material here that is so fun and I really love this project bag and it is adorned with these beautiful enamel pins from the Nice and Knit ladies so cute. And in here I have my chunky cabled cardigan. Is that what it's called? Chunky cardigan from the knitted cable source book by Nora Gone. Here is a picture of the garment. And like I said, I have not picked this project up in several weeks 
and I hate it when I do that. <laughs> I absolutely hate it when I put a project down and pick it back up. Last night I picked it up to try to start to work on it and I had forgotten so much of what I had been doing. So it took me like, I don't know how long, a while to like re-study the pattern and the, you know, the to see where I was and the stitch pattern that I was doing and where I had left off and you know it just takes me a while to get back into the mindset of knitting this project it's like starting all over again so I hate it when I have to put a project well I don't have to but I hate it when I decide to put a project down and um anyway I would rather just work on a project until it's done but I don't know anyway I had other things that I wanted to get done and wanted to work on so here is where I'm at this is knit in pieces from the bottom up and then it is sewn together this is the back piece and as you can see, there's my progress keeper on there, which is a beautiful little progress keeper from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. And I, it's in the same spot. I haven't made any progress, but I thought I would just share it with you since it has been so long since I have worked on this. So this again is the back piece. I need to just knit a few more inches. I think like four, maybe three or four more inches before I'm done with the back piece. So I am using Knit Picks eco wool do i have a tag in here i don't it is eco wool and it's in the wilbur colorway it's a bulky weight it's 100 percent eco wool um maybe it's called simply wool the base i'll put that down below as well <laughs> anyway so i'm excited to pick this back up and start working on it again and hopefully i won't put it back down and forget about it again finish it now that I've got all the gift knitting done, I should be able to focus on it, so. Anyway, those are all the works in progress that I have going on right now. I have several projects that I have, I'm excited to start working on as well. I have a test knit that I'm going to start hopefully within the next week, and I'm very excited to start that as well. So, um, you know, and I've been thinking about my make nine list that I'd like to focus on for 2019. And anyway, I'm getting super excited about new projects, but this is all I have for right now. I have a few new things that I'd like to share with you from my advent calendars. So just go through those. I have two advent calendars that I um, have been blessed to have. I did a couple of swaps with different ladies. Um, I had hosted a mini skein advent swap in my Ravelry group and so I had two different swap partners for that. So I don't know what order I received these in but it doesn't matter. I'll just go through all of the goodies that I have received. Well most of the goodies. There's also some teas and candies and little bits and bobs that I won't share but I'll share all the yarn and a few of the extra goodies that I have received. So here is um, the first one. This is Bernat Socks in the Crazy Camouflage colorway. This is Knit Picks Felici in the Dark Side colorway. There's several other colors in there I know, but I don't know what they are. So I guess I could probably find some other people's Ravelry pages to find out what is what other colors are in there, but I think it'll be kind of fun to be surprised. This beauty is the Yarns of Richard DeVries, which I have received quite a few from um, that yarn dyer, and I have loved every one of them. This one is gorgeous. Here is another one from the Yarns of Richard DeVries. This is from Manos de Uruguay, also gorgeous. Love the rich jewel tone colors, especially. This one is unknown, but it's also beautiful and it has some kind of a pinkish red and blue poking out through it. So this will be another one that's a surprise. This one is Fleece Artist in the Nebula colorway. Oh, that's so pretty too. I'm so excited to 
work with all of these and I don't know exactly what I'm going to make with them, but I'm excited to come up with a plan. This one is Biscotti Yarns in the Rose colorway. And also on here is a cute little stitch marker with a hand that says handmade on it. And then I also received these two. They are Crafters Square yarn, 20% wool, 20% polyamide, 60% acrylic. They're 30 grams each, but I don't see a colorway on them anywhere, but they're very pretty. And then a few other goodies that I've received is this embroidery house sampler, which says happy is the house that shelters a friend. That's so cute. I really like that a lot. So sweet. Has a little dog and cat in there. Bird. So cute. A couple of birds. And then I got another little package of David's tea, which this is the second one I've gotten. And this one is called coconut oolong and it smells delicious. And then I got another little sheep ornament as well, which this is the second one of these I've received, but the first one was white and this one is gray. And they're so cute, I love it. So those are some of the goodies that I've received from my first advent calendar. And then the second advent calendar, I've gotten tons of yarn that I'll show you in a second, but I also received this um, DPN holder, or Cozy. So cute with little kitties on it. And then here's all the yarn I've gotten. This is Stranded Dye Works in the Piñata colorway. That's so pretty. I love it. This is Coastal Colors but I don't know the colorway for this one. And it's on a um, gold Stellina or silver Stellina. No, I think it's gold Stellina. Very pretty. This is also coastal colors in the watercrest colorway. And this is also on gold Stellina. I love those colors, so pretty. This one is um, Yan Tan Tethera Yarns in the Moss colorway, and this has some yak content in it, which I'm super excited about. I've never knit with any yak fiber before, so, and that's beautiful as well. I love these colors so much. Here is another Stranded Dye Works in the Fleet Street colorway. So it's a slight gray with um, pops of a bright yellow and maybe deeper grays in there as well. And it also came with this cute little progress keeper, sheepy progress keeper, which is adorable. Okay, the next one is Little French Meadow in the Always colorway. Real light pink speckled with brighter pops of pink. It's blown out a bit. This one is Yantan Tethra in the Hay Daffodilly colorway. And I don't normally um, uh, gravitate towards yellows, but especially light yellows, but this, I just love it. I absolutely love this one. It is just so fresh and springy looking. It has these little pops of green in it. And this also has a little stitch marker on it that is a sheep as well. Okay, the next one is Giddy Yarns in a self-striping colorway, but I don't know the name of it. This one is Hand Dyed by Kate in the Enter the Rainforest colorway. And she very appropriately put on a parrot or a macaw stitch marker. She's really, I kind of noticed that with this one especially, she's she kind of color codes her, or it, she's good at like putting the little extras that she puts with it. Sometimes like, I know for example with this one, I'm pretty sure for this one she had a pink packet of tea. So it just kind of coordinated. Anyway, she's good about that. 
Okay, this one is in Giddy from Giddy Yarns, and it's in the Robin Red Love something colorway. I couldn't quite read what it was named. It's got coral and gray and brown, as well as natural colors in there. Beautiful. This one is Jelly Beans Yarns in the Orchid colorway. Okay, this one is Rosie's Moments yarn in the Wildfire West. Wildfire Woes, I think is called. And it also has this cute little stitch marker on it. It has little hearts on it. And the last one is from Crystal Skies Hand Dyed Yarns in the Rocky Mountain Christmas colorway. And I believe this must have some kind of a special fiber in it as well because it has a really nice halo to it. Love it. All right, so those are all of the wonderful goodies I've been getting from my advent calendars and I'm continuing to love them. I'm going to be so it's going to be kind of a letdown once Christmas is over because I've gotten so used to having all these goodies to open every day, but it's been super fun. So I'm very, very grateful. So again, thank you, Shelly, and thank you, Allison, for all of the wonderful goodies you have sent me. I love everything. Okay, the last thing I have to share with you is a um, set of yarn from my Etsy shop. So every time I record a podcast, I like to share a few of the hanks of yarn from my Etsy shop that work well together. And this week, I'm gonna share one of my faded sets with you all that I'm sure I've shared in the past on another podcast, but I know it's been a while since I've shown this faded set. So I thought I would just share it again because I dyed it up this week. It is a set of seven hanks of yarn. And so I'm going to try to hold them all up at once in the right order. There we go. This is my continual feast faded set. And it is actually put together using um, seven of my regular colorways. So you can actually buy each of these colorways individually in my Etsy shop as well, but I also offer them in this set of seven as well. So I'll go through each color. Starts with my Sweetness colorway, and these are all on my Twinkle Toes base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 10% nylon, no, 20% nylon, 5% Gold Stellina. This is a natural base and it is speckled with pink and deep plum and brown, which also actually breaks quite a bit into specks of um, a brighter orange and tiny little specks of blue. I don't know if you can see all them, but um, it's really cool how some of the dyes split into several other colors that the, each, that the dye is made out of. The next color in this fade is my Tranquil colorway, which is a very light pink. And the next one is my Satisfied colorway, which is more of a deeper rosy pink. This is one of my favorites. This is my Abundance colorway. It's not only one of my favorite colorways, but I also think it is my favorite to dye. It has so many different colors in here. So you can see here's some deep red, deep plum, black, um, this kind of brownish red color. Um, it has specks of brown and black and um, deeper red as well. So it's just got a fun mix of colors in it. This is my Gracious colorway, which is kind of a deep raspberry, maybe I would call it. So it's very um, pinkish, purplish, I guess. It's kind of a hard color to describe, but it's showing up pretty accurately there. This is my Honor colorway, which is a nice deep plum. I love it on the Twinkle Toes base. And the last one is my night colorway, which is just a solid black. So, yeah, 
I really love this um, faded set. I personally um, love the co these colors together. And um, I actually made a shawl using almost all of these colors. I didn't use the Gracious colorway. I used my Steadfast colorway instead of the Gracious colorway, but I made the Time Trades shawl by Caitlin Hunter for one of my friends using um, this color palette pretty much. So anyway, I love it and I hope you all like that set as well. Um, all of my colorways and faded sets can be found in my Etsy shop. They're available on all nine of my bases at all times. So please feel free to check out my Etsy shop at noblecharactercrafts.etsy.com if you would be interested. I would really appreciate it. So we've been doing very well this week. Again, of course, getting super excited about Christmas coming up in a few days. Um, last time I um, recorded a podcast, I had shared that we were going to go look at Christmas lights that weekend, and we did. And um, all of the kids really enjoyed that, and they all had better attention span to last a little bit longer this year, but our youngest did after about, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes or so, he was, he was done and he wanted to go home. <laughs> but the older kids were happy to continue looking at lights, so anyway, we had a really nice time doing that. Um, we've had family in from out of town uh, this week visiting for the holidays. They've already come and gone, but um, it was so nice to be able to see them. And we've gotten together for several little, you know, get, get togethers with them. And we got to go to the zoo with them yesterday, which was so nice. And um, the weather has really warmed up, which I'm, I mean, it's okay because we can get out a little bit, but all of the snow is melting. There's still tiny little traces of snow out there, but we're probably not gonna have a white Christmas, which Makes me sad, but oh well. <laughs> More snow will come for sure eventually, but oh well. We have had already quite a bit of snow and it, we will get more. I just like it when we have a white Christmas, of course. So anyway, um, other than that, we've been doing well. I'm all ready for Christmas, so that's great. Um, I just need to wrap a few more presents. It's easier to keep presents um, hidden when they're not wrapped, I find, because I just have them packaged in a box a lot of quite a few things I have packaged in a box I mean I guess I could wrap them but once they're wrapped then they're more eye-catching you know and a cardboard box is not eye-catching and so I have it in my closet and the kids don't really pay attention to it but if I were to wrap it they would see the pretty paper and then they'd want to know what it was you know so I still need to wrap a few presents but I really enjoy wrapping presents so that is okay with me um other than that we're gonna um you know we're looking forward to our um, Christmas Eve service at our church and then we will open up a, uh, one present. We usually op let the kids open up um, the present that they receive from my mom and stepdad. Um, they always send Christmas presents and this year they sent pajamas for everybody including my husband and I. So we're going to open those on Christmas Eve and then we will have all of our Christmas presents for the kids on Christmas morning and um, I'll get to open up my advent calendars and I also have another swap that I've received that I think I'm going to wait until Christmas morning to open up as well so anyway of course we're all very excited for that and we're going to get together with Chris's um, my husband's family on Christmas day as well so that will be great um so yeah I think that's all that I have to share with you all I hope that you all have a wonderful week ahead a very very merry Christmas to all of you that are watching. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would really appreciate that. I hope you all have a great week ahead. Thanks again so much for watching. Bye-bye.